Hey guys, this is the YouTube version uh, of my show. I don't love the idea of even putting it out like this, but I'm going to use YouTube to stay in touch with you guys from now on. That means this version is missing all the stories about coronavirus, insurrection, your Second Amendment rights, and more. All of these, of course, are usually my most honest, brutal, and important stories. Anyway, you can uh, get the entire unfiltered and uncensored show for free by going to thecomicsgym.com or nickdip.com. It's still free on both of these sites, too. Uh, and if you want extra content each day, join at patreon.com or thecomicsgym.com for the daily Encore show. Also, while you're uh, on these sites, please make a contribution to keep this show free and check out my tour dates. I'll be in Phoenix, uh, Raleigh, New York, and Texas in the up and coming months. Remember, uh, you guys keep thinking it, I'll keep saying it, and please enjoy and please share today's episode. Talk to you soon. In 2022, nearly everything you see and hear is filtered. Social media companies are deleting ideas they disagree with. Uh, the mainstream media is reporting only what fits their agenda. And our so-called leaders are using them both to fight personal battles, oftentimes leveraging your livelihood and safety in the process. Just like you, I've had enough, and that's why I created this show. Here you get unfiltered and unapologetic content. I don't care if I hurt your feelings or if I take a position that isn't popular. I call them like I see them. I'd like to ask you to do two things to keep this show going. First, please share it with two people today. Let's show them what brutal honesty looks and sounds like. And second, please go to nickdip.com and make a contribution so we can keep this show going. Or even better, subscribe at the Comics Gym or on Patreon today and get an extra Encore show each day, discounts on merchandise and more for being a monthly subscriber. Thank you guys so much for watching, sharing, and contributing to the best show around. You guys make it happen. Thanks so much. What's up, folks? Welcome, monthly subscribers, to the Nick DiPaolo Show. The spine, the the um, the the steel, the um, the um, the uh, whatever backbone of the show. The uh, people that have some dough. What do I got for you today? I don't know. Renowned historian Ken Burns, uh, not a fan. And Ken, you're not fooling anybody with that fucking black hair, and your face is 114. And you have the hair of Paul McCartney when he was fucking 12. Not a good look. Why don't you do some his Look up the history of fucking hair coloring. Um, here's why I don't like Ken Burns. Because he doesn't like America. Everything he does. He could do a, he could do a goddamn documentary on um, the history of, I don't know, Hostess cupcakes, and it'll be, it would start with a white man beat a black girl to death because she took a hostess cupcake in a store in Alabama and a jazz. Well, the white man stole the jazz, but, but, pee, pa, pa, pa. The Civil War, I know people are going, no, nah, he's good. I, I've watched this shit. I'm just saying. 10 minutes into it, I'm like, okay, okay. You tricked me again. You said it was about the history of fucking tap dancing. I, I, I was racism. Where does he live? He's in New England there too, isn't he? Him and Stephen King ought to get a room and fuck each other silly. The conditions of the, uh, he's got a thing out. The conditions of the county he's talking about, he's on a podcast with a couple of knuckleheads, uh, are as bad as they were before the Civil War, uh, Ken Burns said. He's not wrong about, he's talking about right now in this country. 
And uh, Kenny, yeah, I'd agree. And uh, I know you don't vote the way I do, so I'll blame you. I'm documenting this. I'm going to make a fucking movie <laughs> if I'm still around in 10 years. Uh, he's not right, wrong about that. I mean, we are... People are talking about, hey, why don't we split and, you know, we can make our own music and movies. You guys have your stupid liberal stations and shit, but I don't think uh, that's practical. Anyways, not too many people know more about American history than this guy. Okay, maybe I'm overdoing it, but I, I'm not. I'm tired of his work. <laughs> it's just the same shit. Fucking, he's doing a history on ice cream cones. Did you know that a black man invented the ice cream cone and then some white guy took it from him? He's produced legendary documentaries on jazz. Boy. Somebody get me a Xanax. And baseball, of course, I mean, and they spent 90% of that going, they wouldn't, they wouldn't let black people play, which everybody fucking knew, but I'm glad you broke it down into an 11-hour series. Uh, two unique American inventions. <laughs> but Burns is perhaps most well-known for sleeping with Stephen King <laughs> in the woods of Maine, where they both hate the country from a distance off the grid and... Uh, Burns is perhaps most well known for his documentary on the Civil War. I, I, I was so fascinated, I ordered the chess set. The Franklin Civil War chess. The Opus released in 1990 received countless awards. He got a hand job from Les Moonves. Uh, uh, Robert Iger of Disney blew him. Uh, and it was watched by millions. I didn't watch it because I stumbled over some snuff films that night, I remember. That's how bad my agent is. The, the only film role he got me was a snuff. And I'm a woman, playing a woman. In it. Uh, Burns recently appeared on the Smart Less podcast. And during the show, he explained to host Jason ba Jason Bateman, you have a podcast. <laughs> really? <laughs> These guys are talented, by the way. I got nothing against them. And, and you know, fucking uh, Sean Hayes, uh, big fruit cup, but very funny. Uh, explained to hosts Jason Bateman, Will Arnett, and Sean Hayes the seriousness of the country's current divide. And I say to Ken Burns, Who the fuck are you? Are you writing a book? Who the fuck are you? No, I'm making a movie. It's the only thing I've ever agreed with him on. But you don't have to be a genius to fucking know that we're about to... I gotta get that to Dallas, I might have you come over to my house. I haven't fucking touched my AR in about six months. I don't even remember how to use it. Huh? Tell me I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, I put it under the bed loaded. I was hoping the wife was gonna find it. Um, it's really serious, he explained. Boy, we needed Ken Burns to tell us we're on the verge of Civil War. There are three great crises before this. The Civil War, the Depression, and World War II. This is equal to that, he said. Why so serious? And uh, yeah, you're exactly right. But who are you going to blame? I can't wait for the documentary on this if we're around. And it'll be called Trump Started It All by Ken Burns, the white man. Bah, bah, bah. Let me tell you something. All I hear is how racist and evil and, and uh, you know, white supremacy. Wouldn't now be the time for white supremacists to maybe, if they existed, to the level that you say they do, Biden, wouldn't they maybe be doing something now? Like, you know, you think they might have a problem with like uh, 15,000 Haitians under a bridge? And, you know, so sh shut the fuck up. California becomes the first state to pass a stealthing bill making non-consensual condom removal illegal. <laughs> this is what they're worrying about in California. Have you seen California? Have you, do you watch the news at night? Have you seen Venice Beach? Have you seen Melrose? I saw a clip yesterday. People on Melrose... Boulevard, Avenue, Avenue. Marvelous Avenue. It's been 20 something years since I lived there. Just having lunch outside, middle of the day, car pulls up, two black guys go out and hold them up. And they say that's par for the course. There's tents and homeless people and just, and this is what they're worried about. You fucking people are so ignorant, you lib fucks, especially you broads who hate men. Why are you saying that? Well, I'll show you in a second when we put up who's responsible. This is what they're worrying about um, with all that shit going on. Homelessness, uh, drug use, the schools are the worst, 
They're practically bankrupt. Their government is being recalled, hopefully. The California legislature has passed a bill that makes it illegal to remove a condom. How are you going to? They're literally in your bedroom. The libs used to hate this shit. How do you enforce that? Oh, you, you get a lawyer later on? Eh. Is that what a condom looks like? I've never... I mean, I pulled one of those out of my ass once, but I, didn't, I thought it was a water balloon. Uh, I, would not, I put on a condom once. Okay, and uh, Christopher Reeve had more feeling below the waist. Gotta be shitting me. Might as well have had a winter glove on it. Anyways, it's illegal to remove a condom without permission during sexual intercourse, an act known as stealthing. The bill named AB 453 deems stealthing as a form of sexual battery in the California Civil Code. Everything is easy. Even when I lived there 25 years ago, I'm in the dentist's office, there's signs everywhere. Um, the material they make fillings out of can give you cancer. There's cancer warnings on fucking car tires, on trees, on park bed. They are so psychotic out there. California is now the first state to pass a law banning stealthing. The bill was introduced by Assemblywoman, and she's a piece of ass, Christina Garcia. I don't know why this would even... Look, look at the broads involved. That's Christine in the front, and she's the hottest one. Look at the man-child on the right. And these are people that, why are they passing any bills that have to do with sex? That's a guy in a wig on the right. Got the fucking jaw of Jay Leno. Yeah, yeah. Don't you hate it when somebody pulls the rubber off and they're sticking their dick in your <laughs> And then look at the black basset hound on the left. What is that? That's old glory from Paradise Alley. <laughs> Matt loves this one. Old glory, I tell you, I'm done fighting. I can't fight no more. Look at these three. Any, that's Christina Garcia. She's the hot one in the front <laughs> who told the New York Times that the passing of AB 453 will make it clear that this is not just amoral. Who the fuck are you to say anything? But also illegal. Well, how about when a guy takes it off and the girl says, yeah, take it off out of mind, and then she changes her mind later on. Are you going to do that like you do all the false rape charges? Garcia had been trying to get this bill passed since 2017. It is a big week for victims, Garcia. See that? Uh, it's a big week, she said. It, it is a big week for discussions around these issues, even though two feet from my door, there are homeless people shitting on my sidewalk. And it is a big week to talk about consent, is what this... Uh, I don't know nothing about that. Exactly. Just stick it in and get out of there. Now that AB 453 has been passed unanimously, the last step is for Governor Gavin Newsom, I guess it ain't going to happen, <laughs> to sign it. He has until October 10th to do so. Newsom hasn't commented on the bill because he doesn't know if he's going to be around in his pending signature. After being signed, people who remove condoms without consent can be sued. All right. Counselor? Yeah? Counselor? Stealthing is highlighted in Michaela A. Cole's HBO series called I Hate Men. No, I May Destroy You. Somebody fucked to that? In one scene, Arabella, the main character played by Cole, hooks up with a guy she's dating. I'm going to guess he'd be white. Uh, she tells him to put on a condom, which he does. During intercourse, he removes the condom and makes a, blows it up and makes a poodle for her. Uh, he removes the condom without her knowing after he asks her to change positions. I tried that once. It was tremendous. I put it on my head like Howie Mandel. Broad never knew. Uh, when she realized he took it off, she confronts him. His response is that he thought she knew and would be able to feel the difference once he took it off. Oh, come on, fella. That boy is a P.I.G. pig. The New York State uh, Senate has also tried to pass the stealthing bill. Again, another city... That has way bigger problems, uh, but they haven't been successful yet. Just give them time. Do you see what the libs focus on, folks? Both of these cities are crumbling. They are in the worst conditions arguably they've ever been in, whether it be crime, infrastructure, and these fucking nitwits are worrying about, and again, it's always a, a bill that defends a woman from a guy who... <sighs> I would say nine out, of, nine out of ten times, and I'm not exaggerating, the guy would say, do you mind if I take this off? Okay, let's say, even if it's seven out of ten times, is it really worth going through the legislature and all this shit while your city's crumbling around you? I guess so, pinheads. And by the way, take a look at all the lib-run cities. That's all I'm going to say. 
Go online tonight and Google Baltimore. I was watching uh, TV last night. I forget what news. They put on a clip of Baltimore. And the, oh, no, excuse me, Philadelphia and the drug problem. I thought, I'm not kidding you. I looked up, I thought it was a trailer for a movie like Zombies. You know how they love these zombie movies? They were showing people doing this, walking down the street. I'm not shitting you. One guy's going like this. Another guy's in a fetal position in the middle of the street. Another lady's going like this. And this was just a section of Philly. But God damn it, don't pull that condom off. Rose McGowan. Remember Rose? She sort of started the hashtag uh, Me Too movement. And uh, yes, she does look like Justin Bieber. But I don't hold that against her. She helped bring down that scumbag Harvey Weinstein. So Rose McGowan, and she's coming around like a lot of libs. Is fine. She's waking up to smell the coffee. I almost give these people a pass in Hollywood because I lived in Hollywood. You stay there long enough, you get confused. You're like, well, I have to go along with the dog shit politics in this town if I want to work. Um, and sometimes people actually start to believe it. But Rose McGowan slams Black Lives Matter alongside Larry Elder. What uh, she was quoted as saying is, he might just know more than you, which was so refreshing to hear. There's Larry. I don't know if you guys saw over the weekend, he was marching the last week, and some fucking white woman in a gorilla mask threw an egg at his head. You know what I call that? You know what I call that, folks? I call that elder abuse. Who's with me? <laughs> Fuck you, you couldn't have thought of it a million years. Anyways, uh, yeah, white woman in a gorilla mask. That's how they, that's California, the dumbest state in the union always has been. And someday it'll break off. Uh, anyway, she called out BLM movement during her event with California gubernatorial candidate Larry Elder, arguing that people should stop labeling each other based on race. And now, Rose, all due respect, I'm pretty sure you were labeling old white guys as misogynist pig. You have a right, I guess. You had a big fucking pig jump on you. But I'm just saying, you threw a few people at the certain boxes back in the day. Anyways, I'm glad you're waking up. Uh, stop labeling each other based on race and focus on their humanity instead. I don't know. Is humanity worth... Uh, I don't know. Where the fuck am I? Oh, Tighten that one up, will you, Matt? And I'm blacker than black, and I'm black, y'all. That was Larry Elder, by the way. Uh, they want to hear, th this is what she says, and I quote Rose McGowan, they want to hear that the more we micro-label each other, the better we will be, McGowan said during a Sunday news conference. The reality is, she says, today I challenge this state, I challenge these voters, I challenge the media. By the way, that's all one thing in California. It's as blue as my balls, okay? It sucks. It's all Democrat. It's all lib. That's why it's a shithole. And the media is in cahoots. We know that. I challenge the media to back up. Be human first. Vote for humanity. Boy, I guess she doesn't care. She's out of showbiz, right? She doesn't give a fuck. I would tell anybody outside the family what you're thinking again. I'm not in the family, no more. I'm outside the family. Elder has been leading the pack among candidates to become the next governor of California. It'd be terrific. It's fantastic. If uh, current governor Gavin fucking shapeshifter Newsom is removed from office in the state's recall election, that's on Tuesday. Though recent polling, hmm, here it comes, suggests Newsom may narrowly survive the vote. Oh, does it? Because he was getting smoked and over, what, 4 million people signed the goddamn thing to get this thing enacted? But all of a sudden, he might fight it off. Again, globalists, I bet you Zuckerberg and the other scumbags did everything they could to bury any negative stories about Gavin. And they probably threw some money in there, some seed money here. It's a special, re you know how they work. If he survives, California's going to... I don't know. I'm giving up my condo in Venice Beach. Ugh. I lived out there for one year. I almost cut my own wrist. I thought I was a big shot. I did uh, three, three Arsenio Halls in like six months. And I told my girlfriend in New Hampshire, see you later. I'm going. 
Venice Beach, I didn't know anybody. Living in a basement apartment. I'm looking outside, it's 98 degrees on a Sunday. They closed the beach because of gang activity. Oh, it was the most worst year of my life. Luckily, there's one guy in my building I made friends with who was from New York. He fucking, he used to try to drag me out because my girl, yeah, it's a long story. Anyways, McGowan is at my house right now. McGowan, McGowan appeared alongside Republican candidate after accusing Newsom's wife, Jennifer Seibel, uh, Newsom of attempting to persuade Rose not to go public with her allegations against Harvey Weinstein. So, you know, she's a savory character protecting a fucking rapist, in my opinion. So this woman, I don't know, she says, this is Rose talking, some blonde lady uh, with the name, uh, last name of Newsom, Cole calls me and was like, David Boys, by the way, he was, he's a, he, I think he was, boy, was he GW's lawyer when all the Chad shit went down? I believe so, very powerful lawyer. Wants to know what it would take to make you happy. <laughs> Rose said, bring me Weinstein's cock on a platter. I'm kidding, that was me. Uh, what would it take to make you happy? McGowan said during an appearance on the Rubin Report. Boys is a, an attorney who represented Weinstein. He did? I didn't. I forgot about that. Counselor! 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 McGowan declared at the event Sunday that she was no longer a Democrat. Thank you, Rose. And don't become a Republican either, because they're shitheads too. Uh, she also said that uh, despite having some different policy views than Elder, I guess she's still for slavery, she said. But other than that, this What? What? Who? Huh? Um, some different part, whatever. She believed uh, he was the better candidate and the better man. It's refreshing. Refreshing. McGowan specifically took issue with the media and white critics. This is how left-wing fucking California is. They, they've come full circle. The white people are, fuck. They think they, nobody spoke out when this lady threw an egg. Nobody on the left. None of it wasn't on CNN, MSNBC. Nobody said shit. Imagine if that was a Trump supporter throwing a fucking egg at a black candidate. Your mother's ass. It will be on a loop for the next ten years. Uh, anyways, took issue with the media and white critics disagreeing with his message as a black man simply because he disagrees with the Black Lives Matter movement. So they disagree with him because he doesn't go along with BLM's pure hatred. And I'll say it one more time. Their mission statement is they're Marxists. They're here to overthrow the U.S. fucking government. And because he disagrees with that, they, you know, uh, California, you make me, not all of you. This is beautiful. Northern California, beautiful. Understand, uh, she says, understand who it's coming from and that he might just know more than you living in a different skin, McGowan said. Good for her. I'm loving it. Elder himself took issue with the rise in critical race theory politics during the event, saying he doesn't believe in systemic racism. You can't say that, Larry. Get back on the plantation. The first time Gallup asked about racism, about whether or not you'd vote for a black president, was 1958, Elder said. And the percentage who said yes was in the high 30s. Now, only 3% said they would not vote for a black president. I would think it would have been higher after Obama. I got to be honest, okay? If that's a fact, tell me, am I lying? Larry Elder said, I am going to be uniting when I become governor. I'm going to use my bully pulpit to unite us because we have far more in common than we have apart. And he's goddamn right. I used to listen to Larry when I lived in L.A. for years. Um, can you imagine he's saying that and then you get nitwit? Kamala Harris going, diversity is our strength. Eh. Not an original thought in her fucking head. Oh, my God. Larry, good luck to you. If Newsom wins this, all we've been hearing how he was getting crushed, right, for the last few months. Now, all of a sudden, he might stave it off. Oh, what a world. What a world. Hey, DC Comics announced uh, Monday on a national coming out day. Oh, is that what? Does that mean yesterday? National coming out day is so. the same day as Columbus Day, you fucking faggots. Really? How long before they tell us Columbus, you know, was a big girl? 
DC Comics announced Monday. Anything that has DC in the word is a bunch of fit. Uh, a national coming out day. Any, did anybody know that? Does anybody give a fuck? How about Wiz National Eating Pussy Day? Is that coming up soon? Every day. Every day, said Dallas, the only guy left with some fucking nuts. Uh, anyways, coming out day that the new Superman is bisexual. He's as powerful as a locomotive and he can leap from dick to pussy in a single bound. <laughs> and will start a relationship with a man in the forthcoming issue of Superman, son of Kal El. Sure. I see, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. See, us three guys that don't know about this, because we were weird little boys. We liked girls and played sports. We didn't do this shit. This is reported by IGN. Well, thank you. So, Superman's son is uh, by, does that really? It... That's faggot stuff. No, no. You want to call it by its name? That's strictly for fags. Easy, Coach Gruden. <laughs> How did I not use that? How did I not use that when I was talking about Gru John Kent, ooh, original name. The son of Clark Kent and Lois Lane. Remember, they, he got her pregnant at an Eagles game in the locker room. Uh, who inherited his father's powers uh, will fall for reporter Jay Nakamura. Oh, my God, you had to make him. That's fucking Rachel Maddow. She dyed her hair. Nakamura whom he met while trying uh, and failing to attend high school using a secret identity, according to the New York Times. Boy, you really gave us some good ones today, New York Times. I hope something bad happened. After John Kent burns out from trying to save everyone that he can, that happened to me during a house fire in high school, Jay is there to care for him, rub his balls and lick his taint according to a new release from DC Comics. How do you feel about that, Nick? I despise it with every fiber of my being. Again, this is not about being anti-gay, anti-bisexual. I understand women being bisexual. I understand that wholeheartedly. I don't understand why women are, I don't, I mean, this handsome guy, I don't care. Once we're naked, we have hairy ass cracks and, I don't understand, you know, we, we don't always smell good and, but, you know, I don't know what I'm saying. I'm so confused. I'm staring into Matt's eyes. They're kind of a light blue today. Uh, the two kiss in the fifth issue, which will hit stands November 9th, and it'll hit my toilet at 1.30 after I... I've always said everyone needs heroes, and everyone deserves to see themselves in their heroes, and I'm very grateful DC and Warner Brothers share this idea. Writer Tom Taylor said in between hand jobs, according to the release in his ass, Superman's symbol has always stood for hope, for truth, and for justice. Just another woke moron. Dude, that makes you as unoriginal. To have this type of thinking doesn't make you progressive. It, you're thinking like everybody else. You're a brainwashed sheep. You have no fucking mind of your own, which most kids who grew up reading comics don't, by the way. Nick, that's not fair. I don't give a fuck. Today, that symbol represents something more. Today, more people can see themselves. Why are you supposed to see yourself? This is so typical how arrogant this, gener arrogant this generation is. More people can see themselves in the most powerful superhero. I get news for you. People who see yourselves in Superman, you're not. That's the problem with our society. Your parents told you you were Superman, but you're not. You're a fucking lonely loser. I hope my fans don't read comics. I know it. It transcends both. <laughs> All right, I will. Will you please shut up? All right. In an interview with the Time, why didn't they get Gruden's opinion on this? See, that would be real journalism. Uh, Taylor added the idea of replacing Clark Kent. Listen, listen to this brainwashed. This is what makes this is virtue signaling signaling at its best when it comes to white people. They say uh, the idea of replacing Clark Kent with another straight white savior felt like a missed opportunity. What, financial opportunity? Because if you do it woke, you know, everybody's going to buy into it because they're all as stupid as you are, the nerds that read this shit. Is that what you meant? 
a, another missed opportunity? I got news for you. There's not a broad on the planet that anybody believes could be Superman. But you, I, I know this is fantasy and shit, but you're the one who started this. You're the one making them bisexual. So if it's important to you, I'm going to pretend it's important to me. How about that? We fucking, I don't even know what I'm saying now. <laughs> a new Superman uh, had to have new fights. What, over tampons? Real world problems that he could stand up to as one of the most powerful, you know, like homophobia. Is that what the episode's going to be? He's not fucking fighting. What's, what's the new kryptonite going to be now? A pussy for him? Powerful people in the world. What does that even mean? Oh, you brainless. You're a wormy cut sucker, you know that? Sorry, kid. Don't mean to be rough on you. Who is he, anyways? He doesn't look old enough to fucking... You know, most kids, and again, that uh, read comics. That's why he... They're not even worried about sexuality. That's not why they read the shit. And again, most comic readers' kids, they don't get laid till they're in their late 30s. <laughs> and it's usually at a Dungeons and Dragons party. This story, uh, I don't know how you feel. They're making these dolls look pretty goddamn real, but I think uh, after hearing this, I don't know if they know what they're doing as far as what guys want in a, in a, in a uh, you know, uh, cum ashtray. <laughs> Sex robots with artificial intelligence to become super intelligent by 2050 and see owners as slaves. Oh, <laughs> now wait a minute. That's about as close as Jennifer, to Jennifer Aniston I'm going to get when she was on Friends. Does it come with that surprise look on her face? Because that's what she, when I pull my pants down, that's usually the look I get. Not for the right reasons, I'm saying. Like, what happened? Was it a boating accident? This was no boating accident. Did you notify the authorities? Don't do not smoke in here. Sex robots will become super intelligent by the middle of this century and may start to rebel against their own as an expert has claimed. I wouldn't mind being whipped by her. That's a good looking doll. I always thought women's mouths should be in that position 24 hours a day. I mean, with intelligent stuff coming out of it. <laughs> Don't you love her? I do. I'm kidding, I got a beautiful one. A huge advances in artificial intelligence have already created a competitive and innovative uh, market. Yeah. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger, no Will Robinson. Danger. Elite sex robots are currently capable of carrying out conversations. Yeah, so is a drunk girl who's semi-retarded with nice tits. Is that what you're focusing on, guys who are building sex robots for guys? You're making sure they're super intelligent? Do you not get how it works? I used to say this on stage. I want a girl just smart enough to be able to find her way home from her third aerobics class that day. <laughs> what a sexist pig. You're a P.I.G. Carrying out conversations. Yeah, I want to talk with my doll. It's the reason guys get dolls. No chatter after you blow your load. You fucking throw her off the bed on top of the fucking beanbag chair upside down. Carrying out conversations, developing their own personalities, <laughs> and mimicking orgasms. My wife does that now. What do you find? Bill Dahl, a manufacturer based in Las Vegas, who would have guessed? Uh, the, U the U.S. is working on a model with facial recognition. Why is that? So now my sex doll can turn me in for fucking... How long before the Chinese put a spy in this? The academic uh, Dr. David Levy believes their intelligence will outstrip humans by 2050. And I say this seriously, in all seriousness, doctor. Who gives a fuck what you think? You buck tooth jackass. I don't understand this whole people are afraid that robots are going to take over the world. I mean, I'm not scared of anything that I can um, destroy with a bucket of water. Don't we make the robots? Don't humans build this artifact? 
Somehow they believe it, it's going to develop a conscience where they work together. I don't believe that for a second. But if they do, I hope it's about 40 of those sex dolls that crash my party and rape the shit out of me. The author who published Love and Sex with Robots is a very lonely, horny guy in food stamps. No. The Evolution of Human-Robot Relationships in 2007. I already got this book. Told the Daily Star. This is the book right there. Love, uh, Love and Sex with Robots. I think by the middle, he says, of this century, they'll be super intelligent, unlike the drunken whores that we thirst after at a bowling alley at 3 in the morning. We've already seen AI succeeding brilliant in serious domains, and the speed with which new discoveries are being made is quite phenomenal. These advances could help create more rebellious robots. <laughs> Dr. Levy Blee, shut your fucking hole. He went on, if the robots are being programmed with artificial general intelligence, which allows them to understand anything that's been previously stated online or in literature, now, I, I want a sex doll that reads fucking fucking her in the ass and she's fucking quoting Othello. <laughs> then robots could actually become smart enough to decide that they don't want to do what they've been programmed to do, sort of like a wife, <laughs> and to do something different. I'll give you something different to do. Make me a sandwich. Make me a fucking sandwich. No, 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 no. Oh, that's one of the ones that got a new brain. Just like people, uh, can. People are taught legal codes and moral codes, but some don't obey them. Some experts have long argued that sex robots deserve human rights and that we need to rethink our relationship with synthetic companions. I hope this article's over because I'm getting really mad. Asked if they could eventually perceive themselves as slaves. Dr. Levy responded, yes, they could. They, uh, they could also view humans as slaves. Uh, really? Okay. That's your world. I just live in it. That might be the funniest segment I've done. Um, yeah, I, I'm not scared of any of that shit. I challenge you, Dr. Levy, in five, I hope I'm still around, 10 years, send about 1,100 of those sex dolls to my house, armed with guns and shit. See what happens. I'll tell you what happens. My wife will be naked with one of them, and I'll be filming it. That is it. Thank you guys so much for subscribing on a monthly basis. You guys think it. Uh, I will say it. You're very welcome. Uh, I hope I see you maybe down in Florida uh, tomorrow and Friday night. If not, I'll see you on Monday. Take care.